best to Jim and the team as they go off and uh, really excited about that and the missions and life of our church. God bless you all. But today I want to bring to you God's Word and I'm going to start from Romans 8 starting at verse 25. So let's read this together. And Paul says, But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us and groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things God works for good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Would you please pray with me? Father God, thank you that we've got this opportunity now to open up your word. And I pray, Father God, that your Holy Spirit will speak to us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, back in April, during the height of the lockdown, ABC ran an article called Chalk messages and drawings on the streets are bringing hope during the coronavirus pandemic. Kids, but also adults, were painting various pictures of rainbows around streets across our nation. Actually, I saw the same pictures around my street here at Reedy Creek. It was all about hope that we will get through all of this. Of course, we know that the rainbow originated from God as a promise that he will never flood the earth again. And so the colours of the rainbow have come to symbolise hope. We all need hope. The Bible, it's just full of hope. Right from the beginning of creation, there was hope. In the midst of slavery in Egypt, to the prosperity of the United Kingdoms, through to the suffering of being in exile, to the birth of the Messiah and his resurrection and the promise of his return. The people of God had hope. As Christians, we are people of hope, full stop. In the midst of good, but also hard times, we are people of hope. Perhaps the greatest work of theology of hope outside of the Bible was from a guy by the name of Maltman from Germany. Maltman's experience in as a prisoner of war um, in a camp there uh, at the end of World War II led him to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ in which hope played a huge part. This subsequently influenced his theological studies. Just a few years ago, at age 90, his theology of hope hadn't changed at all over the years. In fact, he recalls this. I asked myself, why has Christian theology allowed this theme of hope to escape it? Are not God's promises and human hopes the scarlet thread running right through the prophets of the Old Testament and the apostles of the New? Yes, Hope is the scarlet thread running throughout the pages of the Bible. I read this good acronym for hope. H, hold, O, on, P, pain, E, ends. Hold on, pain, ends. And it does. But when you're in the midst of your pain or hardships, it's hard to have this same kind of certainty. I'm sure that I'm confident enough to say that when you've been a Christian for a while and you've been through a tough time, that seems to go on and on and you've been praying for God to come and, and break through your situation and he seems silent. You have either loudly or softly asked, where are you God? If this is you right now, you are not alone. I have and so have many others been there and know that sometimes 
it can be a long haul. A little over a month before he died, the famous atheist Jean Paul Satire declared that he so strongly resisted feelings of despair that he would say to himself, I know I shall die in hope. Then, in profound sadness, he would add, but hope needs a foundation. I want to say this morning that there is hope that has a solid foundation. For Christians, that foundation is Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul has written, because Christ is the only foundation. I wanted to understand the importance of foundation in the building industry to see what analogies I could draw on that compared to Christ's foundation. But when I googled the importance of good foundation, pages of foundations on the web was all about makeup. <laughs> Did you know that the first commercially available foundation was Max Factor's pancake back in the 1930s? Anyway, as I was scrolling through the different pages on Google and looking at all the makeup foundation, I suddenly thought, what if Robbie or anyone else just walks into my office right now? I mean, how would that look that their pastor is looking at makeup on the internet? <laughs> so I don't have a good analogy, but this is what I do know. With Christ as our foundation, it means one, that we find forgiveness. Jesus laid down his life so that we can be forgiven. We find ourselves in a new relationship with God and we are his very child. We are not alone anymore. With Christ as our foundation, it also means that we can find strength for now. Through the present, through this presence and, and, and the help of Jesus, we find courage to cope with life, particularly through the power of the Holy Spirit and also peace. We can live a life in which nothing can separate us from the love of God. He is for us, not against us. And with Christ as our foundation, it also means that we can find hope for the future. We no longer live in the world in which we have to be afraid of what might happen, but in one where God is in control and working together all things for good. We live in a world where death is no longer the end, but only the prelude to a greater glory. Without the foundation of Christ, we can have none of these things. I like that quote in the intro clip into this message that says that the tallest tree may not weather the storm, but its roots do. Just think about that for a moment. At the beginning of this year, we saw Australia's worst bushfires. It was tragic to see hectare after hectare, totally ravished by the firestorms. So much beautiful bush didn't weather the intensity of these fires. And yet, if you Google the area of where the fires hit, there are many signs now of beautiful green regrowth. Why? Because the roots deep in the soil survive, bringing much nutrients to the burnt trees. It's amazing. And it's the same for Christians who have their roots deep on the foundation of Jesus. So, if you are being belted by the storms of life, remember that Jesus is with you. And like the roots of strong trees, 
while we can't see him, he's providing you with the substance of living hope. Hope that your sins are forgiven and that he's so near to you. Hope that you can draw on his strength and that nothing can separate you from his love and hope that God is in control. And this leads me to my second point, that in hope we are to wait on the Lord. We know that our Lord is there, so now you need to wait on him. Two of the psalmists wrote about this. We don't know of their particular situations. Nevertheless, they wrote about their hope. For example, in Psalm 33, verse 20, we read, We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. And another psalmist wrote, I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word, I put my hope. The prophet Micah lived at a time when the kingdom was divided into two. And the leaders were corrupt by getting money from the people, making many live in terrible poverty. Well, God spoke through Micah, denouncing the corrupt practices and foretold that a time was coming when Assyria and then Babylon will come and defeat them and take many of them into exile. And so through all of this corruption and hardships, Micah, he cries out to God in, in chapter 7. And he says, but as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my Saviour. My God will hear me. He watched and waited in hope. In hope. He knew that a Saviour was coming to redeem his people. And he did. Similarly, in the New Testament, we are told about the young church in the book of Acts and other places. And the challenges that they were facing with many had to go through ridicule and even persecution. And so Paul, he wrote to Titus and he said this, While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Here again are the words, wait in hope. It's not easy to wait, is it? Paul knew this. And so this is where he wrote in our reading, Romans 8. Such a wonderful passage of waiting and hoping and helping from the Holy Spirit. Let me read it to you. But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purposes. Maybe there is something in here for you. So, we know that Jesus is near us, the foundation of hope. And in this hope, we wait as the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. And this leads us us to the next part of hope, that we are to embrace God in the valley. In 1 Kings 20, we find the Syrians being defeated by the Israelites. Then some of the Syrian king's advisors gave the king what they thought was the reason for their defeat. They said that they had fought on the hills and lost because Israel's God Israel's God is the God of the hills. So, 
if they were to fight the Israelites on the plains and, and, and in the valleys, they would win. <laughs> Not good advice. They thought that the God of Israel only helped his people up in the hills and the mountains and not down in the valleys. You need to hear that our God is the God of the mountains, but he is also the God of the valleys. God the Son laid down his crown of glory, his royal majesty, and came down for us, stepping into a human body as a baby. He came down to where we were for the sole purpose of dying on the cross for our sins so that he could bring us up to what God the Father has for us at his right hand. Jesus came down to help us, to crown us with glory and honour, to clothe us with the robes of righteousness and make us his bride, sharing everything that he has with us. That is the grace of God. He came down to our valley. So, whatever you are going through right now, know that God is right there in your valley with you. He's holding you in his arms and carrying you through the valley. Victory is already yours. Just as the Israelites were also victorious in the valley, so will you be because the God of the valleys is right there with you. So embrace God by claiming the promises of God. Paul says in Romans 15 verse 4, The scriptures give us hope and encouragement. The promises of God are filled with hope and expectation. To those needing comfort, there are promises for you. To those seeking guidance, there are promises for you. To those needing affirmation, there's promises for you. To those facing an uncertain future, there are promises for you. To those who are struggling with self-forgiveness, there are promises for you. God has a promise for you. And his promise gives hope. We know from the Bible that God promised Abraham that God will give him a son. Years went past and yet Abraham still believed in hope that God will come through on his word. And Romans chapter 4 talks about this hope that Abraham had in God's promise. I like Eugene Peterson's version of Romans 4. He said, he didn't tiptoe around God's promise, asking cautiously sceptical questions. He plunged into the promise and came up strong, ready for God, sure that God will make good on what he had said. I like that phrase, that he plunged into the promise and came up strong. And it's the same with you, that when you plunge into the promises of God, that you will also come up stronger with a confident hope in him. The rainbow that God paints in the sky is a beautiful reminder that he is the source of living hope to those who suffer through sorrow and pain. Such a reality can give you immense hope. You always have hope. With eternity, the best is yet to come. Hold on. Pain ends. You always have hope. I want to pray with you. Father God, I want to pray now particularly for those who are watching, who are going through some dark times, going through those valley experiences. 
I pray, Father God, that you may grant them your hope. Your hope that is based solely on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Father God, that through this hope that you will help them, Lord, to see that their pain will end. I pray, Lord, that you'll continue to intercede for them by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know their needs. I pray also, Lord, that there will be many that will be lifted out of the valley and will experience mountaintop joy. Father God, come and minister to your people. Thank you for this blessed hope that we have in Jesus. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching today. Um, I'm just about to put up some questions so that you can go through them, whether it's by yourself or with the group of people that are with you. Thank you. Have a wonderful week.